Welcome back. Here we are again, right? I gotta be honest, I look forward to this time every single week. There's nothing I love to do more than studying scripture with you and also learning more and more about Jesus. So why don't we go ahead and pray? And then we're gonna take a look at some scripture that I think is really awesome for the day that we live in. Let's pray. Jesus, we just wanna say thank you for a moment that we get to rest for a moment that we get to fix our eyes on you. We know that there's a lot that happens in our daily routines, but what we do right now is we just slow down, we stop and we receive from you so that we can be refreshed and renewed and ready for whatever it is that you have for us. And we look forward to seeing your plans work out in our lives. In your name we pray, all God's people say together now, amen. So currently right now, we live in a very unique time in history. It seems like, for the most part, instability is on the rise. We're seeing a lot of people uh, not trust the government as much as they used to. We see a lot of people who are distressed, who are anxious, who are stressed out, and also who are falling more and more into addiction. In fact, in America, there's 331 million people of those people, 258 million are adults, and 20% of those adults are addicted. That means that we have 50 million people addicted to things that harm their bodies. I think what we can see right now is we can see a major shifting happening in our culture. And so the question that I wanna bring up to you today is this, what do we do in a world that is shifting. And so the title of my message, super unique today. Here it is, ready? Live for Jesus. <laughs> there it is. Live for Jesus in a world that is shifting. Maybe some of you have heard this article. I'm gonna read it to you quick. I thought it was kind of fascinating. And, and this is really kind of the, one of the first times I started studying this, but it reads like this. It says, in 1947, a group of atomic scientists, including Albert Einstein, put together something called the Doomsday Clock. They were looking at world events and they were trying to ask how close we are to a cataclysmic event or the ending of human history as we know it. Every year in January, they reset the clock. And at the beginning of 2023, they said that we were 90 seconds to midnight. Midnight is their language uh, for some sort of cataclysmic event and some alteration or ending of human history. They moved it to 90 seconds to midnight because of the invasion of Ukraine and the war with Russia. They also moved it because of the effects of COVID and how that actually played out in our world. Now that we are at war with Israel, I can guarantee you that right now in 2024, when they reset this clock in just a couple days, we are potentially living in a day that we've never lived in before and we are closer than ever before to the ending of human history. So knowing that, right, kind of starting this off with a really uplifting time, right? Knowing that, my question to you is this, are you living for Jesus? Are you ready for the end? Because the world and the church responds to this in two different ways. The church and the world are different from each other in responding to the end. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians. And what I want to do is I want to take us into a moment where Paul the Apostle is addressing the church in Thessalonica. He's addressing the people letting them know how to live in a time where persecution is being experienced, where there's a shifting that's happening, and how to live with anticipation that Jesus is, in fact, coming back. One of the reasons why he wrote to the church in Thessalonica was because he wanted to remind them not to live according to their own sensuality or not to live with various forms of self-seeking. He wanted them to live in accordance to the Spirit of God. He wanted them to live for Jesus. And so 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 4, reads like this, and I'm reading it out of the New King James Version. It says, 
Paul, Silvanius, and Timothy. And Silvanius is another name for Silas. So Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church. That's who he's writing to. Remember, the church is not the building with four walls and a roof. The church is the people. So if you're a believer in Jesus, you are the church. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says these two things. Listen to this. In a time of persecution, in a time of distress, in a time of shifting in the world, he says this. He says, grace and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. What he's saying is he's saying, in these turbulent times, you are able, as the church, to have grace and peace. You see, the church responds to the shifting differently than the world responds. Right now, with the shifting of what's happening, the world is responding with no grace and no peace. But Paul the Apostle is telling the, Thessal the church in Thessalonica, you can respond with grace and peace from God the Father. We are bound to thank God for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith is growing exceedingly. I want to ask you today, in 2023, did your faith grow exceedingly? Exceedingly is a word that has takeoff power. It has, it has, it has that, that thrust. It has that motivation. It has that endurance exceedingly. Did your faith grow exceedingly? I know mine did. Every single week we gathered together, it was a constant growing of my faith. As iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And that's what we've been doing. And why have we been doing that? Because we want to grow exceedingly in our faith. And he was, he was commending this church in Thessalonica. He was, he was saying, good job. <laughs> Your faith is growing exceedingly. They were so loving. They were joy-filled and they were excited people. As a church today, let's be so loving, joy-filled, and excited even in a world that is shifting. Then he says this, he says, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and your tribulations. Now the New King James Version right there uses the word tribulations, but the uh, ESV version uh, says it just a little bit different. It says, um, for your persecutions and for your afflictions. And here's what the word afflictions means. It means a state of pain, distress, grief, misery, a cause of mental or bodily pain, which our world is seeing a ton of right now, especially the mental part. They're being afflicted. There's an affliction going on in our world. And there's a shifting. And now it seems like that affliction is just multiplied. And it's like it's just you know, illuminated and more and more people are experiencing affliction and bodily pain, sickness, loss, calamity, or persecution. These are the things the world produces, listen to this, against the church. And then Paul the Apostle closes it up and he says, he says um, that we ourselves boast among you for the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you may endure. What Paul is saying is he's saying, even though you're experiencing all of these things, you will endure. Keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on Jesus and live for him in a world that is shifting. So he was encouraging the church in Thessalonica through this letter that he wrote in 2 Thessalonians. What I thought was interesting is if you take 2 Thessalonians right now and you take it right out of scripture and you apply it to us today, it could be the same message. I want to encourage you today that in a world that's shifting, you can live for Jesus because there is a spirit at work in the world that wants to destroy your walk with Jesus. In fact, we see the spirit at work in our schools in America and all around the world where there's more confusion than ever before, where there's more anxiety and more stress and more doubt than ever before. We see the spirit at work in our colleges where anti-Semitism is on the rise and they are chanting against everything that the Bible is for. I just need to say this straight and you might disagree with me, but you know, God loves the Jewish people 
And so if we're chanting against the Jewish people, we're chanting against God. The Bible says that, that they are the apple of his eye. So I would encourage you, don't poke his eye. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's a spirit at work wanting us to be hateful and wanting, wanting people to be annihilated. And why is that? It's because there's a spirit at work in the world that wants to destroy the walk that we have with Jesus Christ. It wants to destroy the purity that we find in God's love. We see the spirit at work not only in our education, but we see it in entertainment. If you're a parent right now and you're watching this, I would highly recommend taking more time than ever before with your child at the end of the day and ask them, what kind of things have you, have you been watching? What kind of things have you been consuming? What are some of the things that your friends have been saying? What are the things that you're hearing? Because in this house, if we live according to scripture, Joshua 24 says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so we don't do the same things that everybody else does. We draw a line and we want our kids to be protected. And it's our responsibility as parents to really monitor and monitor well, like what's going into that brain of theirs? Because we want them to experience life with Christ in a world that is shifting. We see the spirit at work even in our economy, as people spend money on things that are extremely self-destructive. It seems like self-destruction is on the rise. And, and more than ever before, we're seeing people hurt and we're seeing people give up and we're seeing people just suffer. And listen, as a church, we can identify that there's a spirit at work in the world that is acting against us. And I would honestly go as far to say that that spirit at work in the world is Satan, his effects, and all of his demons that are working with him to try to stop the beauty of what Jesus Christ wants to do in each and every single one of our lives. In fact, John 10, 10, it says it like this. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Make no mistake about it. There is a spirit at work against us that wants to rob us of the abundant life that Jesus can provide. And so how do we live in a world that is shifting? Well, we live for Jesus. Now, if you're like me and, and I'm a believer and, and here's the deal, like even as a person who is an unbeliever, if you have any kind of sanity, you're probably asking the same questions that really a lot of us are asking. And here's a question. Here's the question. How bad can things get, right? How much darker can the world honestly become? And I think that we can all agree that the world that we live in is not necessarily set up for a good human life and flourishing, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? We can see that there's just this, mm, what is going on kind of thing happening around us. Well, Matthew 16, 18, it says this. It says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So here's what we need to grip onto right now. We need to say a big but then to what's going on, okay? So we're gonna practice this right now, right? The world is looking a little bit chaotic, but then, we're gonna get to it. The world is growing darker and darker. But then, here we go. But then there's the church. You see, Jesus said that he would build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Just as, listen to this, just as the world is a place where culture is bringing hell up, the church, the church is a place where we want the culture of God's kingdom to come down. And so when Jesus promised that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, what he was letting us know is he was saying, even in a world that is shifting, but then you keep your eyes fixed on me. In a world that is going in a way that it's never gone before. And listen, we're gonna see some things that we've never seen. We're going to encounter some difficulties that we may not exactly be ready for, 
but then the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It is the same message that I want to share with you today that Paul the Apostle shared with the believe, believers in Thessalonica. He was encouraging them, hey guys, listen, if it gets darker, you just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You live for Jesus in a world that is shifting. And here's what you're going to receive if you do. You're going to receive grace and you're going to receive peace. I think, honestly, as sure as we're sitting here right now, we know that the world needs to experience more grace and that the world needs to experience more peace. I think in our own lives, listen, let's just be transparent, in our own lives, I think we can admit that we would like to experience more grace and more peace. And so listen, I want you to know that the way that we experience more grace and more peace in a world that is shifting all around us is to live for Jesus. What is grace? Grace is simply recognizing that we will never measure up. We will never impress God enough to earn his approval. But what did he do? He sent Jesus to become our approval. 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, uh, For he who knew no sin became our sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's grace. It's amazing that, <laughs> that there's not one good work that we could do that would impress God enough to allow us to spend eternity with him. It's simple. It's simply all about grace. God sent Jesus to this earth because he saw our rebellion, he saw our sin, and he saved us from ourselves. Jesus's perfection was traded for our imperfection at the cross. He took our imperfection on. We took his perfection on. And now we've become perfect in the eyes of God, made right in the eyes of God, because of Jesus. That was grace. We didn't deserve that, but he did it. What is peace? Well, listen, I want you to understand something, that you can have peace today. You can have peace with God. In fact, listen, if you belong to Jesus Christ, believing that he died for your sins, God is not angry with you. God loves you. God is not going to punish you. He has forgiven you. God is not going to abandon you. He promises that he will be with you all the way through your planet. He will never leave you or forsake you. There is peace in God through Jesus Christ. That's how, that's how you can have peace with God. In a world that is shifting, how do we have grace? We live for Jesus. How do we have peace with God? We live for Jesus. And also, you can have the peace of God. Listen, this is important to understand. Because peace really kind of has two different sides to it. There's, there's peace with God and then there's peace of God. Well, what is the peace of God? Well, here it is. Listen to this. You can live life knowing that the world is nearing its end, but you're going to live for Jesus. And you're going to live with Jesus forever. That's living with the peace of God, knowing that even though this world's going to come to an end, there's a next step. We're going to be with him forever. So we have the peace of God living inside of us because we know we're going to be with Jesus. Philippians 4, 7 says this. It says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see, in a world that's shifting, the world responds differently than the church. The world responds like this. The world has no grace. N-O grace. But the church, we know grace. K-N-O-W. We know grace. The world has no peace, N-O, peace. But you and I, the church, we know peace, K-N-O-W, peace. The world chants, no Jesus, N-O, Jesus. But the church, we chant, no Jesus, K-N-O-W, no Jesus. And so listen, how in the world do we live in a world that is shifting right now before our very eyes? We live for Jesus. I want you to know that I'm excited for you. I'm cheering you on. I want you to know that you can rest today knowing that as things change, you can still be stable. You don't need to live with the, the distress and the stress and the anxiety in, in, in an unstable world. You can be stable because you're gonna live for Jesus in a world that is shifting. 
Hey, we're going to wrap this up with our blessing verse so that when you leave, you know you leave with the blessing of God on your life. Psalms chapter 67, verses 1 and 2. Let's say it together. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us that his way may be known on earth, his saving power among all nations. Be blessed today.